Welcome home indeed. We are very glad to be able to join you for worship on this Thanksgiving Sunday. We're also kind of excited because we are holding worship in the building today as well, which is a completely new experience for us uh, in these different times. Uh, but I know that it is good to see people as long as we're being reliably safe. Uh, we will do our best to continue doing that and to continue with worship in this way as well. As we do each week, we begin by extending to each other the peace of Christ. That peace that God intends for us through justice and good relationship. The peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Thank you, Steve. It's good to see you again this week. It's good to see you too, brother. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking as we were getting ready for today that... Uh, it's so different to be celebrating Thanksgiving Sunday uh, in this way, online, as well as in the building. We've never done this before. And so I know I have been very grateful for the, so much work that people have been doing to get us ready for this moment. What is it that you're particularly grateful for this Thanksgiving? I know the standard answer that I'm supposed to reply with is snips and snails and puppy dog tails. <laughs> right. But the reality is there is so much more to be thankful for, as you've indicated, the number of people who have just stepped up to help us out in a variety of different ways so that we can accommodate in-person worship. The patience that people are showing uh, in terms of just recognizing that things are dramatically different and we need to continue to just exercise patience and kindness with each other. And that's something that I've seen a lot of and that I am deeply and profoundly appreciative of. This time of year, as I've said on so many occasions, uh, when I lived in northwestern Canada, this was the one time of year I would get homesick uh, because of the beauty of the creation that surrounds us. And what strikes me is it's not just the beauty of the creation these times, but it's the beauty of the people in terms of exercising patience and kindness with each other and reaching out to each other. And also this past week, I've been involved in a number of conversations where people are expressing concern for each other. All of those things make me deeply and profoundly thankful for the sense of community that we have here, yes. not just in this congregation, although this is where I feel it expressed most fully because of the relationships that we have, but also beyond that. Mm -hmm. And so I've, I've created quite a list of things <laughs> there. What, what things in particular are you thinking of in terms of thankfulness? Yes, I, I, I mean, obviously I agree with, with all of what you've said. Uh, that has been my experience too, uh, particularly working with the volunteers in this church well before COVID, but certainly during this time as well. Uh, I, am, I, I can't yet say that I'm thankful for because I'm still looking forward to uh, my mother's turkey dinner. Uh, and uh, I have to tell you, that is just a big bright spot in the week upcoming. Um, I am particularly thankful for the time that I get uh, with my family. Uh, we've. We've been very cautious in terms of our approach to COVID because of uh, some health issues in our families. And uh, so anytime we get to be together and not have to worry uh, is just wonderful. And uh, I see it in the kids uh, and I also feel it in myself. And so I'm reminded this Thanksgiving in particular, 
just how precious it is to be able to spend time with friends and family. And uh, I think maybe it's something that in previous years I've taken for granted because you get busy and life rolls on. Uh, but this year in particular, I'm very grateful for that. And oftentimes we, we take that for granted. Mm -hmm. uh, friends, mm -hmm. family, yeah. and they're always there. Yes. And sometimes we've come to realize mm -hmm. that that isn't always the case. And so That's right. it is especially true. Yep, this year especially. And so let us come before God in prayer. Whenever people gather to give thanks and to pray, God blesses them with sacred gifts of joy and love. In this season of change and harvest, we are humbled by a creation that is not of our own making, and we give thanks for the gifts of life. God pours out the spirit of hope and healing upon us and upon all people. Let us breathe in the reassurance of peace and breathe out the burden of anxiety. Holy One, renew us, we pray. Amen. Amen. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him, keeping their distance. They called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourself to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice, he prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well the gospel of Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Jesus is walking through Samaria when a group of ten lepers begs his mercy. He tells them to go to the local priests and once they do, they find themselves healed of their disease. Of the ten of them, however, only one returns to say thank you. Jesus doesn't seem sad or even angry about the other nine. He just seems curious, perplexed maybe, that the other nine don't also express their gratitude. Now, Luke says that the one who does say thank you turns around, which is a scriptural way of saying that he has changed his life. His return to thank Jesus is not just literal, it's also figurative. His healing is a turning point in his life. He has been forever changed. Jesus tells him, your faith has made you well. Or in other versions, your faith has made you whole, restored to health, returned to community, renewed of life. Perhaps like me, You've already anticipated the shadow side of this story and others like it. The interpretation that for years has been used as a weapon rather than as a shield. That if your faith is strong enough, you can be healed. And if it isn't strong enough, well, you know the result. It begs the question, how is it that some people who are faithful and prayerful are healed and others are not? One of the things I notice about this story is that Jesus intends to heal all ten lepers, and all ten are healed. Now, we know of no medical condition for which that is now the case, except perhaps the enjoyment of sausages. If you like sausages, 
you can cure yourself of that affliction simply by learning how they are made. 100% guaranteed. I happen to love sausages, which is why I refuse to learn how they're made. My point is that the ten lepers are not asked to pray for their healing. They are healed. It's a free gift. There is nothing required. Jesus doesn't ask anything of them. He is, however, clearly surprised that nine of the ten express no thanks for their life-changing experience. Now, he doesn't condemn them or reverse the healing, but he is careful to point out that it is the gratitude of the one who turns around that makes him whole. The healing is life-changing, yes, but it is the gratitude that is life-sustaining. As we hear in Deuteronomy, faith is not simply a set of beliefs or opinions or rules. Rather, faith is gratitude for what God has done and the trust that God will continue to provide. Religious obedience doesn't earn us anything, but prayer and worship and spiritual practice help to place our concerns and our grief within the context of our blessings and joy. There's a scene in the old movie Shenandoah, which my family recounts each year around the Thanksgiving table. None of us has watched the movie in decades, but it's become part of our celebration. In the movie, a farmer's wife insists that he give thanks and say grace before dinner. He's reluctant, but he begins, Well, I plowed the field, and I scattered the seed. I tended the livestock, and I watered the fields. I harvested and stored the crops, but my wife says that I have to say thank you. So, thank you. Amen. Farmers and fishers on these lands, both indigenous and settler, have long had practices of giving thanks, not only for healthy crops and full nets, but for whatever sees them through another year. In a similar way, it never ceases to amaze me how so many people, no matter how badly off they are, will say things like, well, it could be worse. It's more than just a deflection. Often, it's a way of putting our trials in a larger context of thankfulness. Something I've certainly discovered the hard way is that if my mind and heart are focused on what's wrong, then everything will seem to be wrong. And when I can turn my attention to what is good and going well, toward my blessings, a change in my frame of mind is close at hand. For me, that is what worship has nearly always done. My love of worship is not merely professional, nor is it obedient or the force of habit. It is joyful memory and exuberant response. In worship, we take time to remember how we have been healed and made whole, how we have been cared for and supported. We recall strength that we have found in the midst of grief and love that has found us when we feel most alone. We remember and we give thanks. And it is in that act of gratitude that we are made whole. Because as people of faith, we know that the promises of God can only be found together. There is no justice or peace. There is no mercy or forgiveness. There is no healing or wholeness that happens outside of relationship. For a while now, and probably for a while longer, we have had to redefine what it means to be gathered. 
It used to be that gathering as the community was something we presumed was done in person. We have had to learn the hard way that while a building helps us to be in one place at one time, the work of being one body in Christ, a community of one heart, is largely done outside the building. That work of being the body is phone calls and distance visits. It's checking in and finding out, asking, listening, and doing what we can. When we gather in worship, either virtually or physically, we are giving thanks for what God has already done in our lives in the week that has passed, and finding the strength to turn again to the work of being the body for each other and for God's world. On this Thanksgiving Sunday, I am deeply grateful for you and for God's love at work in you. Amen.
On this Thanksgiving Sunday, there is much for us to give thanks for. And so let us turn to God in prayer. God of all blessings, on this special day and in this season, we offer you our thanks for the gift of life, for breath that sustains us, for food that nurtures us, for the love of family and friends. We give you thanks, too, for this part of the world and the relative safety we enjoy here. We thank you for the mystery and the beauty of creation, for the joy of relationships, the knowledge we hold, and imagination that fuels creativity and new insights. We thank you for communities, for families who nurture us, for friends who love us, for those who share our burdens and daily tasks, for people from other backgrounds who call us to grow in understanding. We give thanks for children who lighten our moments and for those of older generations who offer us perspective. Help us to see your love reflected in all people. We thank you for this day, for life and for one more day to love, for opportunity and one more day to work for peace with justice, for your grace and the experience of your presence, and for your promise to be with us in life, in death, and in life beyond death. As we count our blessings, we know there are many who are in need of our prayers and support, and we pray for them. For those working for reconciliation and healing with our First Nations. For those striving for peace with justice, especially to end racial and ethnic discrimination. For those working for human rights in places like Afghanistan, in Palestine and Israel, for refugees who have fled in fear from war, turmoil, disease, and abject poverty, and those who are working to support them. We pray also for those facing natural disasters, and especially those exacerbated by climate change. May all of our hearts be transformed so we join together in working for peace with justice, for healing and compassion for all people. And we pray also for all who are in need and those who we know in our hearts, and we lift up their names before you. For those who are ill in body and in spirit, we pray for healing and wellness, courage and strength, God of love, we pray for those who grieve. Bless your people with the comforting presence of your spirit. Be with all of us as we give you our thanks. We ask these things in the name of Jesus, who teaches us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As our time together closes for this week, Steve and I would like to express our thanks to Steve Spencer for his musical leadership, and also to the many volunteers who are making sure that we are anchored and safe as we return to our building this Sunday. And so, as we come to this time, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May God's face be made to shine upon you. May God make you especially thankful for all of the blessings of this day and all of our days. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.